untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white equipment deck titled Faceforge, featuring a ton of new cards from the latest anthology expansion, but at the center of the deck we have the Colossus Hammer plus a Resolute Strike combo. Resolute Strike a one-man instant, saying target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn, and if it's a warrior we may attach an equipment we control to it. And then we have Colossus Hammer, a one-man artifact equipment, giving the equipped creature plus ten plus ten and it loses flying, and normally equips for 8 mana, so the goal of the deck is to get one of our cheap warriors in play, we've got 12 cheap warriors total, and then cast our Resolute Strike to equip our Colossus Hammer for just 1 mana instead of 8 mana, which can lead to several turn 3 wins in a multitude of ways. And then if that plan doesn't work out, we still have additional consistency here, thanks to forging the Tyrite Sword from Kaldheim, a 3-mana saga that on the first two chapters creates a treasure token, which can help us cast some of our more expensive spells or sink mana into equipping our various equipment. And then on the final chapter, we search our library for a card named Halvar, God of Battle, or an equipment card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So this can also help us find Colossus Hammer if we don't have one already, if we're sitting with a Resolute Strike in our hand, or it can find our Halvar God of Battle, the 4-mana legendary creature god from Kaldheim. It's a 4-4 and it says creatures we control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike, and at the beginning of each combat we may attach target aura or equipment attached to a creature we control to target creature we control, so we can move around some equipment if we like. And then we also have the flexibility of playing Sword of the Realms, a 2-mana legendary artifact equipment, giving equipped creature plus 2 plus 0 and vigilance, equips for 1 and a white, and whenever the equipped creature dies it returns to its owner's hand, so that's also a great combo, especially with our Fireblade Charger, one of our cheap warriors that's a 1-1, saying as long as it's equipped it also has haste, so that can potentially catch the opponent off guard if we play a turn 1 hammer, and then turn 2 play Charger, equip it with a Resolute Strike to hit them for a whole bunch of damage out of nowhere, and when the Charger dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target, so of course that's great with our Colossus Hammer, because if we get one hit in with a Charger and the opponent kills a Charger, they still die to that ability. We also have a few ways of sacrificing our Fireblade Charger with Kazul's Fury in case the opponent has some jump blockers out there, and Kazul's Fury a 3 mana instant saying as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, and then Kazul's Fury deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. So if we sacrifice a Charger that's equipped with a Colossus Hammer, we get to deal 11 damage with Kazul's Fury, plus 11 more damage with the Fireblade Charger's ability, which is usually enough to win the game, so we don't even have to deal combat damage to the opponent to win the game. And then Charger is also great with our Sword of the Realms, as it will make a 3-powered threat that can keep attacking thanks to Vigilance and can play defense as well. And if the opponent ever does trade, we get the Charger back into our hand, and we can easily re-equip it with Sword of the Realms and attack again thanks to Haste. Then taking a look at some of the other cheap creatures in the deck, we've got Goblin Cavalier, a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one Goblin Warrior with Trample from the latest anthology, and Cavalier gets plus 2 plus 0 for each equipment attached to it. So equipping the Colossus Hammer means we've got a giant Trampling Goblin Warrior, so makes chum blocking for the opponent much more difficult, and we also get a bit of a power bonus for each equipment, which makes it a nice combo with cheaper equipment like Bone Splitter, another card from the latest anthology, 1-mana equipment, and equips for just 1-mana, giving equipped creature plus 2 plus 0, so that gives our Cavalier for additional power, which also adds up. And then at 2 mana, we've got Core Blademaster, a 1 1 core warrior with a double strike, saying equipped warriors we control have double strike. So that's great in combination with our other warriors and equipment, but it also means that if we equip our Core Blademaster with a Colossus Hammer, we can potentially kill the opponent in just one attack. And then at 3 mana we already mentioned Kazul's Fury, which has the flexibility of being played as a tap land if we need to get up to 4 mana for some of our more expensive cards. We've got our Forging the Tyrite Sword, which besides getting Colossus Hammer also has the flexibility of grabbing some of our other equipment, like our one-off copy of Maul of the Skyclaves, which can give our equipped creature plus 2 plus 2 flying and first strike, and equips for free when we play it, otherwise we can pay 2 and double white to move it around. And then we've got a one-off copy of Sword of Body and Mind, also from the latest anthology expansion, a 3-mana Mythic Rare equipment, giving the equipped creature plus 2 plus 2, protection from green and from blue, and whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage, 
damage to a player, we get to make a 2-2 green wolf creature token, and that player also mills 10 cards and equips for 2 mana. So this is especially nice with our various double strike effects, as we get to trigger those abilities multiple times. So that's another fun off we can get. We probably should be playing Shadow Spear instead of Sword of Body and Mind as a way to gain a bit of life against some more aggressive decks, but I just wanted to have some fun with Sword of Body and Mind. And then taking a look at our top end, we also have four copies of Nahiri, Heir of the Ancients, a four mana for loyalty planeswalker that with the plus one ability creates a 1-1 white core warrior creature token, and then we may attach an equipment we control to it. So if we don't have Resolute Strike, that's another way for us to get our Colossus Hammer equipped to a creature without having to pay the eight mana, and then we can maybe even use Halvar's ability to move the hammer from the token onto another creature if we would like. Then we've got the minus two ability that lets us take a look at the top six cards of our library and we can reveal a warrior or equipment card from among them and put it into our hand. So that's another way for us to find our hammer besides just drawing it or searching it up with our forging the Tyrite swords. So that gives us a lot of redundancy. And then the minus three lets us deal damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to twice the number of equipment we control. So that gives us a bit of removal as well. And then the mana base, besides our four copies of Kazul's Fury, we've got a ton of untapped dual land which is great for this deck, four copies of Sacred Foundry, four of the Red-White Pathway, and four copies of Inspiring Vantage, and then we've got four basic mountains and four basic plains. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. No hammer or resolute strike, but we can play a fair game with some of these goblins plus bone splitter, with Nahiri eventually helping us find some of our more powerful cards. We'll lead with Cavalier, and then probably gonna see Bone Splitter plus Equip next turn. Opponent on a Zagoth Triome, now Glacial Fortress into Thought Erasure. Could take Nahiri, could take Bone Splitter. Takes Nahiri. So our opponent may be on a niv 5-color control deck. As we draw yet another land. Well, we do have a modest clock here with our Gavalier hitting for five. And Charger can gain haste as soon as we equip it. Oof. Kaya, pretty clean answer here for Gavalier. But luckily we do have Charger to take out Kaya. Could have also exiled our Bone Splitter. Alright, definitely an argument for keeping up Resolute Strike in case they try to deal one or two damage to the Charger somehow. It's gonna be a Growth Spiral. Into another Triumph, so next turn we can expect to see niv miss it. Although there's Halvar. So, could play the Sword to have a 5-powered Charger that can keep coming back. Or we can just play it as a creature, which seems better here. We get to hit for six. And then next turn Resolute Strike could potentially close out the game for us. It's gonna be Binding the Old Gods instead. Still have our Resolute Strike, never mind, Thought Erasure takes that away. Forging Tyrite Sword. Hit for three. Alright, so in two turns we can maybe grab our Sword of Body and Mind, which can maybe get past the niv Mizzet or Hydroid Crisis. There's Niv Mizzets. And finds. Cut to Ribbons and Hydroid Crisis. And there's a Kazul's Fury. So, yeah, we can just Kazul's Fury the opponent's face, sacrificing Charger, and that's 6 damage. Sweet. So, managed to. Close out the game just in time before the opponent was about to take over with their powerful late game. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw, and we've got turn to equip Gavalier with Colossus Hammer, thanks to Resolute Strike, so I'm keeping. Now, Gavalier doesn't gain haste, unlike Fireblade Charger, so we will have to play it on turn one. So that does expose it to a burn spell, potentially taking it out. Opponent with a Jeskai Triome. So we'll see what we're up to here. Aha, uh -huh, Sanctum deck. Well, could be effective once they get more Sanctums in play, but that's going to be a while. And in the meantime, our opponent's going to be taking a lot of damage. So let's see if they have a cheap removal spell here, Fatal Push maybe. If we get to untap, we can Kazul's Fury. So we can safely attack. And then we've got this as backup in case something goes wrong. Well, our opponent waited a little bit too long here, I'm afraid. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand, I think. We don't have hammer yet, but Forging Tarot Sword can find it in case we find Resolute Strike in the meantime. Nahiri, also a good one. And then we can also just grab more creatures with Halvar if we need more creatures. Or maybe a sort of body and mind if we just want to grab something powerful. Facing a Gruul Guild Gate, so some sort of Gates deck. Maybe a Mesa's End deck. Play our Blade Master. And then next turn I could forge the Tyrite Swords plus use the treasure to equip Bone Splitter and hit for six. And then we can still play Nahiri on the following turn. And then Nahiri can also make use of a hammer that we grab with Tyrite Swords. So yeah, let's go ahead and forge. Putin might be holding a gross spiral. Well, if our opponent is playing a Maze's End deck, we could potentially win the game by just milling a couple of their gates with a sort of body mind, as they wouldn't be able to search them up out of the graveyard. Gonna be a Gates Ablaze to stem the bleeding, that's fine. And then just play Nahiri, can take two. And then next turn I could already get sort of body in mind, so I think we just make a token here. We will protect my home. And then next turn we can uh, equip the sword already. Can also get past a Gatebreaker Ram. I see Scute Swarm. Can still get past that one, and there we see Maze's End. And yeah, we'll grab a sort of body in mind. Play and equip. Hit them for 5. Mill them for 10. Make a wolf. And then I can still plus here, or I could minus to kill a Scute Swarm, but they just have another one, so I think plusing is fine. And then we'll move the Sword of Body and Mind to the new token. So, get to take a look at their graveyard here, some of the usual suspects. And then Maul of the Skyclaves can also help us fly over for the win. Opponent had to reset the board, plays another Skid Swarm, and has a land to go with it. Alright, so we don't have any haste threats. Could maybe minus to try and find Fireblade Charger, let's say we find it. I can play it for one mana. Resolute Strike can equip one of my equipments. And then I can still potentially give it double strike. So I think that's worth it. Alright, there's Fireblade Charger. Play Charger. 
Blade Master for double strike. And then Resolute Strike. Equip Swords, equip Bone Splitter, and attack. And get to trigger the sword twice. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Allures of the Dream Den deck. Yeah, this is probably not gonna cut it, no equipment. Alright, this is better. Now what do I get rid of? Probably a land and keep Hammer in case we pick up Resolute Strike and then I can still play most of my stuff out. And then turn one Gavalier, turn two either Bone Splitter Equip or Blade Master. And looks like we're up against the Aura deck. So Resolute Strike, definitely something we want to see. If not, how do we end the game if our opponent has a turn to Spirit Dancer? It's going to be tough. It's going to be turn to Spirit Dancer. Well, ask and you shall receive. Get to attack. Kind of hope the opponent blocks. Smack them for 15, and next turn is going to be double strike. And we already have built in trample. So that should uh, do it, unless they've got some removal, maybe heal its punishment. It's going to be a Sentinel's Eyes. So they need to land into punishment here. Play Blade Master. All right, GG's. So they might have had a Karmatra's Blessing they were hoping to leverage to soak up enough damage to survive here. So I'll say it wasn't going to be enough. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. No resolute strike to go with our double hammer. So the forging tarite sword's also not going to help too much here. I think this is a mulligan. All right, this one I like to keep. Probably get rid of one bone splitter, and then we can either play Sword of the Realms to synergize with Charger, or we can eventually play Halvar. And then turn one, I can either bone splitter or Charger, since it will gain haste anyway. So if our opponent has a two-mana removal spell, it could line up slightly better to play the Charger. Now that we drew Gavalier, we'll just play Gavalier, since that can hit for five. Opponent fetched a Mountain. Sacred Foundry tapped. So let's see what we're up to. Island, so maybe Jeskai Control. Ooh, never mind. Stormwild Caprador. So they're gonna try and combo all sorts of cards with this. Well, um, can play Blade Master and attack. Hit them for 10. Although I wouldn't be able to keep up Kazul's Fury. But if we get them low enough, Charger plus Fury might be able to kill them. So next turn they could maybe Deafening Clarion, kill this and this, give this lifelink, which would be bad. So maybe this turn I just play Sword of the Realms and a tap land and, and attack for five. Instead of overextending into a Deafening Clarion or maybe a Storm's Wrath. Sure, and then we'll just hit for five. Can't use Kazul's Fury to kill Caprador. Opponent just blocks. Alright, fair enough. Can still play Sword of the Realms and then play Charger without equipping it. 
Is that worth it? Or I can play Charger, equip it with Bone Splinters, play Tapped Fury next turn, play Halfar, but we already have Double Strike with Blade Master built in here. Or I can play Blade Master, equip Blade Master, and next turn Charger can get in. I think I want to get the sword in play. And then I don't want to lose Charger, so I think we just play this tapped. Although then I wouldn't be able to equip both Sword and Bone Splitter. Alright, I guess we'll play the Charger here. And then we still have Blade Master as something we can equip with uh, Sword of the Realms. Could have also played Tapped Fury to next turn have 4 mana to go Charger, equip, equip. But I could see Fury being pretty important to close out the game. Especially combined with Fireblade Charger. So a lot of interesting decisions here. The opponent trading there might imply that they don't have a cheap sweeper effect. It's going to be a Lotus Field. Alright, do they have a way to counter the trigger here, perhaps? Yeah, Tail Sends. Okay. Well, let's equip Sword of the Realms. See if they have a response. They don't. And then Blade Master is probably better than equipping Bone Splitter for now. Opponents at 7, but they do have access to a lot of mana next turn, so we'll see. If we get to equip Bone Splitter and Kazul's Fury, that would already be lethal. It's going to be a Bresh Taunter. Although, they cannot fight quite yet. So equip Bone Splitter. And then... If I were to attack, they block, I take 5, they take 5. I think we just Kazul's Fury here. Since they don't have any counter spells up. And we get our Charger back. Gideon Sacrifice. Well, wasn't expecting that one. Alright, so we take 10 instead. I can replay Charger. But now we're gonna have a hard time winning. Alright, Gideon Sacrifice. The more you know. I guess that's what was holding priority when they had Sacred Foundry untapped. And there's a Caprador and a Storm's Wrath to clear the boards and deal a bunch of damage to us. So do we have any outs left? Well, I was gonna say another Fireblade Charger. Can play it. Double equip. But it's still only 5 damage. So they can block with a Caprador. I deal 5 to them, I replay Charger. But then the Caprador kills us in the air. Alright, GG's. Our opponent almost found a way to lose the game here, but yeah, they're just gonna fight their own Caprador with Brash Taunter and kill us. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is missing a Resolute Strike. For now we can play Charger, run out Hammer, hope to draw Nahiri perhaps. And if not, we've got a turn 4 sword that we can equip to the charger, so it's pretty slow. Don't love it. Alright, this is a little bit better. Can drop a hammer, and then we've got Gavalier plus Bone Splitter early. And we still have a turn 3 sword potentially we can equip on turn 4. And we drew the Resolute Strike, so now our hand's complete.
This is definitely a deck that rewards mulliganing and aggressively looking for the combo. Hit you for 15, and we've got a charger with bone splitter that we can follow up with in case something bad happens to Gavalier. Dawn of Hope, not gonna cut it here. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, onto the next one. All right, we're on the play. We've got double Resolute Strike, Gavalier, Nahiri. So if we find Hammer or the Forging of the Tyrite Sword to eventually get Hammer, we're in decent shape. And then Nahiri can help us find Hammer as well. Yeah, I'll try it. Not having any cheap equipment for Gavalier makes this less than ideal. But we have a lot of outs here. And being on the play also gives us more time to leverage Nahiri. Opponent mono blue so far. Foretells a card. Well, it's probably not a Doomscar since they haven't played a white source yet. So we're just gonna play Taplands, hit for three. Not the most exciting turn here. Could have gone for double Resolute Strike on Blade Master just to get in a bunch of damage. Didn't seem worth it. Cultivate for ramp. Alright, and then Nahiri is probably going to. Minus for now. Try and find some equipment. Hammer would be the best one. Just a Gavalier. Could minus again next turn in the hopes of finding a hammer. We'll see. Five mana for the opponents. And it's going to be a primal amulet. Interesting. So this might be a fog deck that's just gonna try and cast a fog effect as we drew the hammer. Well, we're about to find out. Yeah, they definitely have some instant up here. So we're gonna get fogged to death. This is probably an Elrond's Epiphany to take an extra turn. So I'm not liking our chances. I guess we need to find Fireblade Charger and then Kazul's Fury to deal direct damage. Can plus for now. I new allies. But your opponent's probably gonna time walk us a bunch, cast some more fog effects, and uh, try and kill us that way. Once this transforms, they get to double their time walk effects as well with the Wellspring. Well, I guess the Kazul's Fury on Gavalier would already be enough to win the game. So that's the card we want to draw more than anything else. Sadly, Nahiri cannot help us find it. Normally against Blue-Green you would think that uh, Sword of Body and Mind would be effective, but... Oof, there's a Kazul's Fury. That's a lucky top deck. So we can attack, force them to tap out, and then Kazul's Fury their face. Thirteen damage. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a uh, hammer combo ready to go here. And since our creature is Charger, We'll just play Hammer turn 1, and then we can attack with a Hasty Charger turn 2. Also works out better in case of a Thoughtseize, since we have more creatures than we have Hammers in the deck. Although I guess with Forging Tyrite Sword it's maybe a little different. Opponent aggressively mulliganing, so could be a Tibble's Trickery deck. We are on the play, so we are presenting lethal potentially before the opponent can... Uh, 
do their shenanigans. Although if they hit an Ulamog, I guess they can still get us. Opponents at 7. Gotta hope for no trickery into Ulamog, pretty much. Oh, just a turn to explore. Alright, so I guess it must not have been a trickery deck then. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We've got a 3 land hand. Resolute Strike, no hammer, but we do have Nahiri to maybe find it. Problem is a lack of creatures. Yeah, this one's a little too sketchy. This one isn't great, but is probably keepable. Now the question is, do I keep a backup Gavalier or do I get rid of something else? And what should that be? Could see getting rid of Resolute Strike, but then if we draw Hammer, we're going to be sad. I could get rid of sort of Body and Mind, but that's kind of our late game plan here. So I think we just ditch uh, a Gavalier and hope it survives. This way we have a late game if we find a third land for Sword. Alright, we found a backup creature so it all worked out. Hit you for five. Opponent with a turn one island. Into Glacial Fortress for Delza card. Could be a sweeper. But we get to play our sort of body and mind here. And then if they wipe the board, I still have Charger that can come charging in. It's gonna be Nico, which can deal two damage to our Gavalier. Take him out. So play Charger. And then let's see. I can use Resolute Strike to equip the sword and then still equip Bone Splinter, so we're talking about 6, 7 damage. And then I'll have a Charger in play that if they kill, would kill them, and I also get a Wolf, so I think that's the play here. Ignore Nico. Mill them for 10. So just blue white control. And our opponent concedes. They know that they cannot remove the charger without losing to the wolf. And if they remove charger, they also lose the game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got double bone splitter, a resolute strike, no hammer, and no early warrior. This is probably Mulligan. This one has a bit of potential. I think I'll try it. Bottom one Halvar. We've got turn one Gavalier. Turn two we can play Sword of the Realms. Turn three equip. And we've got the potential of drawing a Resolute Strike like we just did. All right. Um, opponent is playing Spire Bluff so they could have some interaction here. So I could postpone Gavalier until we can equip it with Hammer so it doesn't get shocked. Although their opponent didn't seem to have any interaction there. So this is going to delay our attack by a turn, but plays around a cheap burn spell. And Shard, of course, implies some sort of Arc Light Phoenix deck, which could discard it, which could easily have a burn spell. Well, we drew Fireblade Charger, so now we can just attack with a Hasty Charger instead. So that worked out. Opponent is at 5, and they'll need a bounce spell here to get out of this mess. All right, Brazen Borrower bounces Hammer. So they had the solution, and now a Shock kills Charger. So I could play Gavalier, but I wouldn't be able to equip it with Sword of the Realms, but then I guess we just play Halvar instead. 
So I guess we just play Gavalier, play Hammer, tap Sacred Foundry, pass. And then if Gavalier dies, I play a Halfar, which the opponent might struggle to kill. If not, I can maybe equip with Sword of the Realms, which might end up being better. We'll see. It's gonna be Sprite Dragon. Plus a Shock. So yeah, Shock definitely would have been bad if we had played Gavalier on turn 1. It's gonna be Lightning Axe, dealing 5. So that can also deal with uh, Hellfire potentially. At least our opponent didn't get back Arclight Phoenix, they only have one card in hand. So hopefully it's not a way to get back a bunch of spells from the graveyard. And for now we have a 4-4 Halvar. So let's see how that plays out. Would be a good spot to find a Nahiri. Crackling Drake, 4-4. Alright, any equipment that I can put on Halvar would be nice now. Just a land. Well, we're slowly getting to the 8 mana for Hammer, I suppose. Don't want to trade Halvar for Crackling Drake just yet. But this game is starting to slip away. Opponent draws 2, they can still play Borrower end of turn. Another Crackling Drake. And the first one attacks. Forging Tyrite Sword's gonna be too slow here, I'm afraid. So if I just, you know, pass, our opponent will get to kill me on the way back, so I have to force a trade for Halvar. I could still be dead, but we have to make this play. Opponent jumps to keep both Crackling Drakes alive. And then next turn, I guess I could equip Hammer thanks to the treasures, but I'm expecting to be dead here. Shock our face down to 11. And the Crackling Drakes get in for 12. Alright, so our opponent had the bounce spell, which saved him here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a Resolute Strike and Hammer. We're just missing a cheap creature to go with it. So we've got 12 outs, basically, here. And if that doesn't work out, our hand's not great, since we've got two expensive cards and only two lands. So we're drawing towards 12 creatures to hopefully win the game by turn 3. If we fail, then our hand's probably not gonna work out. Yeah, it's a high-risk hand. I think we'll try it. And then... We'll just play Hammer turn 1, in case we draw a Fireblade Charger, we can attack right away. Alright, well, that was the best possible draw. Points at 7, and we've got an 11-11 Charger in play, which if they kill it, will kill them. Opponent shocks themselves down to 5. And yeah, we'll attack. It's gonna be Assassin's Trophy on the hammer itself. Alright, that keeps him alive, but also gives me a land to play more stuff out. And I think we'll forge the Tyrite Sword here. So that was a very niche answer, but worked out for them here. Breeding pool untapped down to two into a tomb bound lich. Okay. Bone splitter. So I can play this as an equipment, put it on the charger, force a trade, and then our opponent is still dead since it will take three. GG's. Yeah, overall, this red-white Faceforge deck can
can definitely win a lot of games on turn three if you get lucky enough. And then it's also got a bit of a late game thanks to cards like Forging the Tyrite Sword and Nahiri. Maybe not the epitome of consistency, although we got pretty lucky in our games today. So not necessarily a tier one historic deck, but pretty good for getting your dailies done since the games you lose usually you lose pretty quickly and the wins can also happen fairly swiftly. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.